Today we're going to look at Uniform Cost Search. Before we get into the details, I'll show you the algorithm running on this graph and see if you can intuit what is going on. I'll make zero the start node and one the destination. So as I said in the last lesson, most pathfinding search algorithms follow the same general search pattern. The only difference is the order in which they remove nodes from the frontier. To understand what's going on, we need to look at which data structure Uniform Cost Search uses for the frontier. So Uniform Cost Search uses a priority queue. If you don't know, a priority queue sorts its elements based on some attribute. In this case, it's the path cost. In artificial intelligence, path cost is often expressed as the function g of n. So if we watch the algorithm again, we can see that 1 is added to the frontier with a, a path cost of 418. Then 2 is added with a lower score of 126. So node 2 jumps to the front of the queue and it will be removed next. Then 3 is added which has a path cost of 266 which is 126 plus 140. And so it jumps to the front. And this continues. Until the path is found. So while BFS and DFS choose the next node to explore based on its depth, Uniform Cost Search chooses the next node to explore based on which has the lowest path cost. In the example we just looked at, the path cost is simply the distance in pixels between nodes. However, we could also add weights to the edges, which act as additional penalties for following that path. Notice this time that the right path is taken because it has a lower path cost. So let's remove the weights and go through the algorithm step by step. Okay, so let's turn that back on. Now the first thing we do is we add start to the frontier. We then set its score equal to the path cost. Path cost of reaching zero from zero is zero. Then while the frontier has elements, remove the lowest scoring node and store it in current. Check if it's a destination, which in this case it isn't. Then add it to the visited list. Then for each of its neighbours, we want to test if it's in the visited list, which it isn't. We're looking at one. Then if it's not in the frontier, we want to add it. In the next check, the dist method returns a path cost of reaching n when you travel through current. So in this case, the path cost of reaching 1 when travelling through 0. And we compare that to the current score, which in this case is infinity. So is the path cost 418 less than infinity? If it is, we set its parent equal to the current node. And then we set its path cost. 
we move on to the next neighbour. Is it in visited? No. Is it in the frontier? No. Add it. Check its path cost, which is 126. If it's less than infinity, set its parent, set the path cost, and that's 2 there. Remove the node with the lowest score. Check if it's the destination. If it isn't, add it to the visited list. Then for each of its neighbours, if it's not in the visited, we're currently looking at its neighbour 0, which is in the visited list, so we'll skip this code here and move on to neighbour 3. If it's not in the frontier, add it. And then check that the path cost is less than the current score. And this continues. Now we have one in the priority queue. Check if it's a destination, which it is, and finish. So before we wrap up, I want to show you this example. Just like before, we add zero to the frontier, then expand its children. Then one gets popped off first because it has the lowest of the two children's path costs. And then we end up with our goal node in the frontier. It's important to note that just because the goal node has been discovered doesn't mean the process is finished. You can't be sure the best path has been found until all of the lower scoring nodes have been popped off first. So we remove 5, check its neighbour, in this case 0 is already in visited, so we'll skip that one. Then we look at 2. If it's in the frontier, we don't need to add it again, but we still have to do this check. So we check if the path cost of reaching 2 via 5, in this case 400, is less than the current score, which is 512. If it is, we have to update the parent and then update the score. And then we can finish. So now we're looking at our evaluation criteria. Is it complete? Yes it is. If there's a path, uniform cost search will find it. Is it optimal? And the answer is yes. This is assuming there are no negative path costs. If we look back at our graph and we imagine another path which goes all the way over here and then comes back, but it has a path cost of negative 5000, that would of course be the cheapest path, but uniform cost search would never find it because it would find this path first. So in situations when there's a negative path cost, uniform cost search won't work. But in all other situations, it is optimal.